Vietnamese is officially the fifth most widely spoken language in America. Does that surprise anybody? Viets are coming up. Let's talk about it. Hey, man, back then they didn't want me. Now I'm hot. They all on me. Let's talk Noi about Viet. it. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, Andrew. This just came out. It just moved into fifth place. So, of course, number one is English, Andrew. That's sort of a global lingua franca at this point. Then number two, unsurprisingly, Spanish. At a far number three, we've got Chinese. Interestingly enough, there's some debate about whether Mandarin and Cantonese can be categorized together. However, they share the same writing system. Number four, Andrew, some people were even surprised by this. Maybe not Tagalog. Wow, Filipinos. And that's why there are so many Jollibees nowadays in 2024. And number five, Andrew, we've got Vietnamese. Hey, Viet Cui. Was it Viet Q? Viet Q coming up. Right, right, uh, right. And uh, <laughs> it says Little Saigon in Orange County, California is one of the largest Vietnamese communities outside of Vietnam. Yeah, dude. Uh, I, America has the most Vietnamese outside of Vietnam. Right. Outside of Viet, this is the biggest Vietnamese diaspora. Yes, there are some Viets in France, but not as many as America. Let's obviously. take a look at this heat map. Percentage population Vietnamese ancestry alone or in combination, Andrew. California got the heat map. Interestingly enough, Washington, Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where we grew up, man. Yo, what Seattle is that? area what? has great pho and Houston has great pho. California, obviously. California has 40% of America's Vietnamese. Right. 40%. By the way, here is another map of America, the most commonly spoken language other than English or Spanish. Uh, Vietnamese was number two, Andrew, in Oklahoma, Texas, Washington, and oh, man, I'm not even sure what city, what, what state that is. Is that Mississippi? Is that Mississippi? It could be. Yeah, the dark, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's interesting, but uh, that's just because I think so many people don't speak the other languages. I mean, yeah, there's there's Viet's in the South. Uh, guys, if you look at this map of Vietnamese population in the U.S. from 2000 to 2019, it has been on a steady rise. Look at that slope. Clean, linear line, increase. Right, Lots right. of Vietnamese coming in. Shout out to them. Yeah, you know what's interestingly, and by the way, guys, just the Chinese guy so interested in this side, uh, the Vietnamese language prior to 300 years ago before the French Romanization of the language, it used to be written in Chinese. There was a writing system called Chu Nam. Oh, okay. So that means that the verbal language was Viet. But the written language was Chinese. Right. And Similar to Japan, Korea, it was written in Chinese. But interestingly enough, you know, I looked into Chu Nam. They had a very interesting way of actually writing the characters. It was more cursive and I almost want to say slightly Sanskrit influenced. Oh, yeah. That does look like some Southeast Asian Chinese characters. Honestly, it looks pretty sick. Anyway, guys, um, my initial reactions to seeing the language list is uh, how come Indian or Hindi isn't higher on the list? Right, and I think a lot of people point out that Hindi is actually, although it is the biggest singular dialect, obviously there's a lot of Punjabi people, there's a lot of uh, other types of Indians. That, Telugu, yeah. Gujarati. Yes. And they, and actually, I guess, to, like, you know how uh, Tagalog is the national language of the Philippines and Mandarin is the national language of China. Hindi is the national language of India, but it's less dominant than Mandarin is in China. Right. It's like less people speak it as the lingua franca. Yeah. Some of, I believe some of the elite Indians have to speak English to each other to fully keep it on right. a level playing right, field. Right. Number two, uh, German really took a huge drop off over the years in America. Surprise, surprise. Uh, they replaced the German program at the high school we went to in the Seattle area with Mandarin. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to start offering Vietnamese as a language to learn in, you know, the states with a lot of Vietnamese people. You know what I noticed? There's a lot of Germans in New York, but they tend to speak English with each other when in public because they're like, I think it would be very disrespectful to, like, speak a language that, like, people around yeah. us cannot uh, understand. All right, first of all, everybody speaks all different types of languages in New York. I hear French a lot. I no, but I'm saying heard... the Germans are more, like, trying to not be, you know, push the... I don't know if it's because of the history of World War II and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I could see it there, yeah. Um... A lot of people are saying Tagalog is going to have a big drop off because I guess a lot of second gen Filipino, less percentage of second gen Filipinos speak Tagalog than other people teach their second gens the motherland tongue. Okay, makes sense. And then for number four, Andrew, this is a major uh, insight, Andrew. 
a lot of people are talking about this, and this is going to lead us into our points that we're going to finish off with. Vietnamese culture and society have always been so underrated. A lot of people are looking at Vietnam as a potential economic powerhouse in the future, and a lot of people were just saying, I always found Vietnamese culture, history, and language underrated. Oh, let me tell you this. Viet food, I could eat it every day, to be honest. I, yeah. think, I think Viet food... It's so refreshing. Might be my comfort food. As much as I love Chinese food, Viet food is like right there. It's right there. Yeah. I mean, for me, for me, that, I'm speaking for and, myself. And, and it's less like, to be honest, and I'll be, let's be honest, Andrew, it's less cooked. It's more fresh. Oh, so good. Anyways, uh, let's get into it, David. Um, let's talk about the Vietnamese American. Uh, uh, but but you know, these are just things. trends that we noticed with an outside eye. A yeah. lot of the friends that we grew up with that were Asian were Vietnamese American. I have cross-referenced some of these things with them. Some of these things are my own observations. Feel free to agree, disagree, supplement, augment, compliment in the comment section below. Number one, it seems like that Vietnamese are really moving past old stereotypes. The older stereotypes of, I guess, the Vietnamese American population all what, referencing the war, right? Uh, referencing potentially gangs, but they, I feel like they transferred some of their boldness and their toughness from the old days that were hard, right? A lot of conflict, and they transferred it to business. Yeah, yeah, I know we have a lot of Viet friends, and uh, especially the ones in media, they want the image of Vietnamese not to only be as refugees. Obviously, that's part of their history. That's part of how a lot of them came over here, but they don't always want to focus on the war, right? You don't want to have to, like, talk to a Vietnamese person and be like, oh, yeah, like... Which side was your parents right, on? Right. You know, the north or the south? They don't. They're not trying to always have that conversation. <laughs> I do feel like the younger kids are more moving past because there is some posts on Reddit. So, like, what do you think about? I'm mispronouncing it. Nay Quoc Han, which is the fall of Saigon on uh, April 30th. And basically some people are saying it's like, some people are still caught up that it's a celebration in Vietnam, but it's a day of like mourning in Vietnamese American community. You know what I'm saying? Because right. like one won the war, one lost the war. But a lot of people are like, dude, we just trying to move past that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, point number two, Andrew. Uh, Viet's are really good at running small businesses, specifically small businesses that cash flow positively immediately. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I would just say like a lot of my Viet friends, they run businesses. They're no, very but with immediate people. cash flow, right? Very enterprising people. And I'm not just talking about all nail salons. That's a stereotype. Although obviously a lot of nail, actually a, not, a lot of nail salons in, in New York are done by Chinese people. Uh, but uh, yes, there's just all my Viet friends. They just love to run businesses and they like to be in charge, especially the guys, right? Uh, so yeah, I mean, they're just doing well, obviously for a lot of Vietnamese women. I know a lot of them are pharmacists. A lot of them work in that medical field. A lot of them are doing cosmetics. Uh, they just- uh, Aesthetics. Aesthetics, cosmetics, yeah. Uh, they just- and then obviously a plethora of other jobs. I'm not trying to just pigeonhole Vietnamese people, but you know what I mean. Right. Point number three, Andrew. It seems like Viet's are less, like, I guess they're more focused on their locus. Now, their locus, when I seen locus, I didn't say locus, not the bug, locus of control. They do not worry as much about, like, hyper big picture, like, think piece type things, like, do people accept Asians in America? I guess, like, I'm saying that they more focus on what they can control, which is typically their family and their business. Yes. And I'm saying that leads to, like, in a way, thinking about those like big picture things is, is not beneficial to running like 10 businesses of jewelry shops or whatever. Yeah, I mean, for example, I would say a lot of uh, the Viets I know, they're just like, if we, like even the stuff that we talk about on this channel, they're like, yeah, I get it. But they're like, yeah, I'm just focused on like what I'm doing though. They're like all that stuff, like I'm not even thinking about like, oh, like representation. You know, like Viets, they definitely do want their media representation, but they don't quite, I don't want to say cry about it, but they don't really whine or bring it up as much as like Chinese people do. Right, right Like Chinese, right. we care a lot. And I say that as a Chinese person who kind of cares, but I also understand sometimes I wish I didn't have to care. I wish I didn't have to think about like, oh, how was, did Hollywood's, did they have a Mandarin uh, right. uh, translator on deck to make sure that- You're saying like, was, oh, oh, I got to worry about a uh, three body problem that they like removed all the positive Asian male characters yeah, that were Chinese. Yeah, just like, man, sometimes you just want to be like, who cares and just live your life. But, because, but man, that's your destiny as a Chinese for me. 
being weird. I just worry about my life, man. What I can see. Hey, shout out to the guys that little Saigon official Instagram photo culture, those Instagram pages and Jackfruit. Incredible I, I think work. That, you know, every group is just born into a different assimilation pattern and is coached by all these different coaches essentially you know just like different teams are have different strategies of playing soccer and stuff like that japanese play baseball different than americans they try to hit less home runs it's just everybody got different coaching point number four andrew i do not think that viets try to become white i think that they do like white things but they don't like they just don't try to be wasps is what i'm saying and i'm saying that in a way there's like that's kind of cool because I would say, like, I would compare the Vietnamese American commu uh, community, Andrew, to a little bit like Italians. You know what I mean? Like, uh, maybe like, you know what I mean? Like, sort right, of like But you're saying that other Asian groups want to be more like wasps more, right? That's yes, what you're saying. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that Viets are not caught up in that struggle to achieve what the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant has achieved. Unlike who? Unlike, for example, Taiwanese people. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just saying that that's like a pretty big difference because they have more of like a Sicilian arc, that mafia trans, you know, the mafia thing going away to business. Right. No, I mean, I think Viet's more are like, I've, I've literally heard my Viet friends say, hey, man, you know, we're not fancy people. We don't try to be too bougie and fancy. We're doing our thing. But we're they like bougie things, though. Yeah, but we're living a good life. You know, I can buy my cars. Yeah. I can buy my things. And, and like, I'm not, like, trying to be in the upper echelons of society and try to pretend like I am, like, because they're just like, yo, that's not where we come from. Or, baby, that's not where my particular family came from. And that's right. okay. Yeah, I think that's great. Focus is on having a good life. Yes. Point number five, Andrew. They keep the family together and they share information and resources. They very much work closely together. Yes. And I think that there is upsides in that and downsides in that. Obviously, the downsides is if there's business beef and then families start blah, 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 talking trash and then somebody married somebody that somebody doesn't like, that's the downside. But the upside is if you can kind of mitigate the downsides, you get a lot of like deep interpersonal pings and like you can run small businesses with your family. Yeah. Yeah, because you trust your cousins and your cousin. They all, everybody gonna fall in the line. Everybody run the plan, run the system. And point number six, Andrew, a lot of Viet Americans actually run the Pan-Asian and Pan-Southeast Asian or just Pan-East Asian and Southeast Asian meme pages. Yeah, I think Vietnamese are really in a cool place culturally amongst Asians. Like I'm saying even amongst other Asians. I know Vietnamese, for the most part, generally considered Southeast Asian. But I feel like, and I always felt this way, that Vietnamese, they always know how to balance like showing love for the east asian stuff like the fancy asian stuff but then they also are so proud of being southeast asian mm. and maybe it's because obviously it's right next to china there is quite a bit of chinese blood in vietnam or at least chinese vietnamese people we call them yutlam waqiu in cantonese or or you know hua chow right, right, in, right in mandarin right. trio chow or yeah. uh hoa, chow people. hoa people yeah right. this this is well known like you know i'm not saying vietnamese people are chinese i'm just saying that there is quite a bit of chinese blood but i'm just saying i think viet's always did a good job of being like yo i'm proud i'm southeast asian but like yo the east asian stuff cool like korean stuff japanese stuff chinese stuff cool i'm cool with it but i'm proud i'm southeast and i think like they play this like uh. bridge and so i would say Cantonese who are Southern Chinese and Vietnamese people are like this, are there this huge part of the bridge that bridge East Asia and Southeast Asia, which, because they, first of all, I'm not saying East Asians and Southeast Asians should be so separate, but of course I get that culturally there are differences, but I'm saying like Cantonese and Vietnamese mm. are kind of parts of that bridge. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I would say they have the largest, Overton window or largest consumption window yes. of all, almost all Asians that may sometimes Asians that are like from the far corners of this Asia map that'll pop up right now they more like stick with just one little region they don't eat the they whole feel region like that. yeah it feels or, like or, that or, but, or hang out with the whole region but yeah I mean I think Viet's also they can look like all different types of Asians uh, you know we all know Viet's who look Filipino we know Viet's who look Chinese and yeah. Korean you know well, but so so they have like a whole wide range of looks look themselves. at this video and I'll play a clip of it of Doi, the Vietnamese American singer, with a Vietnamese singer from Vietnam, Min. Let's right. run the clip. We don't cry. Boom! Anyway, guys, listen, man. This is just what I noticed. 
Uh, I'm, ha I'm really happy for Vietnamese Americans. I grew up with a ton of Vietnamese American friends. And man, if I would have listened to some of the business advice that they gave me when I was younger about buying all these properties up, I, I probably would be a lot richer right now if I would have listened, but I just wasn't there yet. Because they were uh, all my friends that were like natural born hustlers. Yeah. Yo, uh, guys, Vietnamese is now the fifth most widely spoken language in America. Yo, yo what's what one dish? Think? What's one dish that you want to see get more popular? Uh, a Viet dish? Yeah. I, I got mine. Chaka, which is the uh, dill catfish from Hanoi. Okay, yeah. i seen some places more serve that. I mean, I, so, I know the bone, bone, or like that, that plate with the... Uh, that sizzling plate with the with the pate and egg and stuff like that. That's getting more popular. Delicious. I see, I see with with the baguette on the side. I just need more plot spaces to serve an actual good pho ga. A chicken pho that is liter that they put work into mm. that is deeply flavored. I think, man, a good chicken pho. You're talking about chicken on the side like Philly like they have in Philadelphia. Could, could be, yeah. I I need some Philly level pho ga in, in New York right now. Philly got some good yo, pho. Yo, yo, beef pho took over America. Pho ga's next. All right. So, guys, uh, let us know what you guys think uh, about our general, like, view on where the Vietnamese community is at in 2024, guys. Shout out to all our Viet friends. And until next time, we out. Peace.